Welcome everyone. My name is Brandon Harrison. I'm Associate Features Programmer here at Doc NYC. I'm very pleased to welcome the team from A Crime on the Bayou, Director Nancy Bursky, and of course, subject Gary Duncan and Lois Eli. How are you guys doing? Doing well, sir. I'm going to just jump off and uh, start with Nancy. Um, when you are making a film like this, which is it's, it's, a, it's a heavy piece following Gary's long journey with this struggle over a long period of time, you have to do a lot of interviews. You're doing a lot of interview time. You're spending a lot of time building the story. How did you really want to craft that over such a, I mean, decades long struggle and then the aftermath of living with that? Well, you know, it was really based on Gary's story. And Gary did such wonderful interviews. He basically narrated the entire period for us. So we were able to use his interview as the spine of the film. Um, so I, I wouldn't say it was easy. And, and, I, and I'm so grateful for Gary to, that he gave us the kind of time and the emotional investment in discussing this with us because it was hard to dredge up these memories again but he did such a powerful job of telling us his story. The film almost made itself. And this question is, is for Gary. Like Nancy said, you know, you have to go into your whole life story and bring this up again and again. How, how was it being a part of this filmmaking process for you? Was it something that you're just willing to go, to go in? Or did it take some back and forth with Nancy? How, tell me about What's it like to revisit that on screen? Well, it wasn't. It wasn't nice to revisit, you know. And uh, I went. Uh, me and Matt did some uh, leg work, you know, because he Matt uh, band me he wrote the book, and uh, so when uh, I was introduced to Nancy, and thought I was kind of. Uh, it was a little bit more easier for me to do when I talked to Nance. I mean, it was, it's nothing that I was really looking forward to do it, uh, bring this up. Not even when uh, I was interviewed with Matt, you know, it's, it's not nothing to say about well, uh, a joyful thing to bring up. Uh, I'm glad I did bring it up because of, of the history part of it and uh, the history part of it, I was glad about that, to, to let uh, the world learn about what happened and uh, going to uh, Supreme Court, what all, what, all, what all it took and what, what everyone went through. Myself, Mr. Sobel, uh, Kyle Douglas, and Eli, you know, that, 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 you know, that, I thought it was very interesting, interesting for some for some people for, for history for people to know. So, but it wasn't it wasn't that easy. Uh, somehow I would say to be uh, glad because it, I experienced a lot of it was a lot of bad ex experience in in, in 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 this in the book and in the document documentary that I went through, you know, for what I went through. So uh, sometimes I think about it right now, it, it, it kind of gets mixed to me. Understandable. I mean, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with all of us. I wanted to like, move on to, to Lois. Just I'm curious about your eagerness to participate in this story. You know, your father was so, uh, you know, critical to these fights during that period why do you feel like it was important for you to participate and what do you feel like is the lesson that people can take away from this time period? Um, at, until the recent Black Lives Matter rebellion, it might have been easy to get a sense that all this was behind us. And in fact, in looking at it uh, and with rose-colored glasses, you could forget how brutal, how evil the American system was prior to the civil rights movement. So any opportunity I can participate in a chance to bring out the history of this country, I like to be a part of it. Um, I'd actually avoided watching Nancy's film, The Rape of Reese Taylor, because 
I, not unlike uh, Mr. Duncan, didn't really want to dredge all of those bad memories up, even of things that I did not personally experience. But she is such an incredibly beautiful filmmaker. She makes poetry out of the most painful of historical incidents. So it was important to me to be a part of that. Additionally, um, I grew up very interested in following my father's exploits, but I was born in 1963, which means that I was a small child when this was going on. So I knew bits and pieces of it, but have had to learn much of my father's history. And in fact, his deposition in the context of Mr. Duncan's trial was very informative for me. And so the opportunity to, to bring this history to light, to celebrate a great and exceptional man like Mr. Duncan, these are opportunities that I couldn't pass up. And given the quality and sensitivity of Nancy Bursky's filmmaking, I really felt an obligation to do whatever I could, even though I was not an active participant in the events of the 1960s. Thank you. Nancy, uh, that was a, 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 as Lola said, masterful storytelling. I wanted to talk about, you have Gary's story, you have Lola's, you have archival footage, you have transcripts, you have all these things that are trying to build into a story over a, a 90 minute period. How are you able to do that in such a way that really told Gary's story in a substantive way? Because you, you, didn't, you didn't have a, a story that's occurring now. You, you filled it out very well. Yeah, well, first of all, I really have to um, pay homage to Richard Sobel who passed away earlier this year, um, he, was, he became a very big part of the story as well. And in fact, the friendship between Richard Sobel and Gary Duncan really became the heartbeat of the story. So once, once I knew that that was going to be a through line, I could follow that. It allowed, you know, very often these stories tell the filmmaker what to do. You know, you, you follow those stories, right? Lois is, is laughing because it's true. It's, it's, I really appreciate everything Lois said, but really, if you're listening, if you're really paying attention, these stories lead you by the hand. And that friendship between Gary and Richard Sobel really did lead me down that path. Um, but in addition, first of all, we did have a book that inspired us. That was a book called Deep Delta Justice by Matt Van Meter. Um, and he was extremely helpful in introducing me to people that were critical to the storytelling. But the other thing that was important to me was, and I've done this in the other two films I made in the same kind of looking at social injustice, um, the Rape of Rizzi Taylor and the Loving Story, was to, to understand that I had a very personal and very dramatic story to tell, but I also had a very wide canvas that I wanted to explore. And the challenge is how to keep that story, that dramatic story, that personal story front and center, but also, expand past that story so that we understand its context, we understand its reverberations, we understand how it relates today. And, and as, as Lois said, this story is as current as any story that's being made today. Gary, can you talk about your relationship with Richard Sobel? Um, obviously he's passed away, but that was the crux of the film. And uh, what could you say about him? It's a Sobel. Oh, he's a great man. We had a, we had something like a, a father and son relationship. Even after, uh, after the trial, after the, this case was over, we're done with, we, uh, we stood in touch. Uh, we was on and off, and, but we stood in touch. And like, uh, like a child that, would get in trouble or something, he turned to his father and looked like that, that's the way it was with me. You know, uh, I would have run into a problem and that I would run to Mr. Sobe, he was always there for me. He helped me and through a lot of situations. And we also, you know, we spent time not even you know, helping me do things, but we done things as, as friends, as a, as a friend. Uh, we would visit each other and we just spent some valuable time together. And, and he, was, he was somebody that you would get attached to, somebody that you would love. My, fam my whole family uh, got close to Mr. Sobel. He, he was that kind of a person. And he was honest. 
a very honest person. He was sincere. You know, when he when he put his mind to something, that's the way he did it. You know, it's hard to explain, but I, I you know, it just he just uh, a special person. My life, my family life, or uh, even my grandson. I read the grandson of mine, and uh, his name was mentioned so much. And even we visit Mr. Sobel with he visit Mr. Sobel with me, you know. And uh, as coming up as a child, it, that's all he knows, Mr. Sobel. If something would go on, it was Mr. Sobel, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I loved him like a father, you know, and still doing. It's just I can't. Say, I can't say enough about him. I really can't. Very well, very well said, Gary. Nancy, was he was he able to see any of the film? Oh yes, um, Gary was going out to visit um, Richard Sobel and his wife with his wife Faye um, in February, right, Gary? I think it was in February. Um, right. And I just and I and I had wanted to go out there to show him the film, and Gary was coming out as well. So we did a screening for all of them. Um, and oh my God, it was a wonderful experience. It was a wonderful day with him and with Gary. It was very warm and they were extremely happy with the film. And, and I wasn't finished with it yet, but they, they liked what they saw. Ultimately, the film is incredibly powerful. I wanted to open this up to all of you, whoever wants to answer, but the relationship between Gary and Richard, and of course the broader fight over many, many years for racial and General social justice is incredibly powerful in the film. What would you want people to take away from your film, uh, especially in the current time we're in now? I'd like to hear Lois. <laughs> um, what's most striking to me about this film, and indeed about the trilogy of films that Nancy's made about this era, is that they start with a person who refuses to do what is expected, who refuses to go along with American injustice. And so what I would like people to take from this film is the extent to which a man like Gary Duncan is a hero and a model for all of us in an era when it seems that injustice is very much at, at the core of what we have become as a nation. The possibility of a man like Gary Duncan saying no to a man like Leander Perez is so foreign in our conception of what human beings are capable of doing under such oppressive circumstances, that it truly is an example of courage that we'd all be wise to emulate. That is what to me is eternal about what this man did. And that is what is so important about what Nancy has captured in this documentary. Uh, you know, I thank God for my mother and my father and uh, and my family, my brothers and sister, you know, and, and my mother, she was a strong-minded person. And I really thank God for her and my father. I thank God for Mr. Sobel, because, you know, uh, he, uh, he took me, my family, the black, all of us, under his wing. And uh, I, I look at today, what's going on today with the leader that we got at this, this, the United States right now. And, and a lot of this was going on, it remind me, it brings back a lot of memories of when I was coming up, when I was going through this, 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 this trial here, how Leanne H. Perez was, and I look at how Trump are, you know, and uh, there's a lot of time my heart get full and, and uh, a lot of time, I, I, I just, I just turn, just turn the television away from it, get away from it because, and uh, I want to know what's going on, and but a lot of time I just walk away from it, and my wife, she, she tell me, my pastor, he would tell me, you know, hey, I, you know, I just gotta pray, and I pray, I pray, and I just can't figure things out, but I guess. I guess it's just the way it, this was going on, it got to be. And I just pray and trust God that as a black person and as, as, as this, this, this great nation, that the people, you know, 
would 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 got would come together, bring love. This this man we got here, he just separating this country, and Perez was the same way. Perez was the same way in 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 in, in, in Plaquemine Parish, and not only Plaquemine Parish. Perez was known all, all over the world, and it it tears me up. And I just thank God. I thank God, and I just pray and trust God that everybody would look at this document. I pray and trust God everybody would read the read the book, and maybe that everybody would come out get get some knowledge out of it, and that it would help this nation as a whole, and that we don't look at each other as black or white. That we and and that we would get as black people that they would give us that they would give us our right our right to treat us like human beings. They don't even treat us like dogs because people, eh, a dog today is, is treated with royalty. You know, uh, you look on television, people got snakes to take as pets. But black people, I guess, they look at us like trash, that you, something that you go throw in the dumpster. I pray and I ask God and I trust God that, 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 that the United States, this world, would out of with the document in the book that they would something would come up, get something out of this here. And uh, you know, I when I was coming up and we coming through this, Mr. Sova told me he encouraged me, he encouraged my family so much that don't worry about it. I gave up one time. I was ready to die. I gave up. I gave up. I really because I, I was determined not to go to jail anymore. And I was That this year, hey, we was gonna beat this, and uh, it, it's. But we had to sleep on my daddy's boat. We, I couldn't go to New Orleans by myself. My family, we were just harass, 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 and, and I hope, I hope somebody, I hope something good come out of all this here. I, I and I thank God for Mr. Sobo. I, I was gonna say, I, I. I definitely think something good has come out of it and the film and your legacy in life is a definite inspiration to me and I'm sure anyone else who watched the film. So thank you, Gary, so much for everything you've done. Thank you, Nancy, Lolis, an amazing film, A Crime on the Bayou. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Take care.